this is a picture that I've also used in the prior versions, but basically it kind of breaks down uh, the different terms, okay? So when you're talking about principles, you are talking about if it's at the Windows level, this could be a login. Uh, at the SQL Server level, it could be a SQL Server login or a role. And then you have some principles at the database level. So these are all the different uh, items that will have access to SQL Server. Well, on the flip side, you have securables. And securables are just about anything in SQL Server. It could be a login, it could be a database. Within the database, you are going to have things like schemas, tables, views, functions, procedures, and then um, you know the list goes on and on. Uh, obviously, these securables will can have you know uh, things at a lower level like columns and uh, whatnot. So I, I do like this picture uh, that explains a little bit more visually what we're trying to uh, tell you. And here is the link that I have included in here. So uh, let's dig a little bit deeper into uh, some of these terms, okay? So as, as for as principles, uh, it really is an entity that can request a SQL Server resource, okay? Like I mentioned earlier, this can be at the server level or it can also be at the database level. Now, when you're talking about the server level, you can really have two levels. You can have uh, at the Windows level or a SQL Server level. Uh, and then this has to do with, uh, with authentication. Um, essentially, you know, when you are trying to give access to uh, principles, um, give access to SQL Server to these uh, principles. Now the windows can be either a local login or a domain login, which is domain is the preferred way to do it. And then as for a SQL server, it is always a SQL login. Best practice is to use a windows level principle only, but uh, that may not work out every time. Uh, you, you know, there are companies that run different operating systems. So maybe you have a uh, Apple OS or Unix environment. In that case, you, uh, you have no choice but to use a SQL login but it is preferred to definitely use Windows um, level principles. Now, as far as uh, what we have talked about so far has been at the server level. Now, moving on to the database level, you can have things like a database user, a database role, and also an application role. So I think enough discussion on this. Let, let us jump to uh, some hands-on exercises. So what we're trying going to do is, and I will walk you through this, we are create, going to create a server login and that, then a database user. And here is the script. Uh, so let me launch Management Studio. And uh, I am running SQL Server 2012 on my local uh, machine here. So I'm going to connect to my default instance. In your case, you would want to enter your uh, server information here. I am using Windows Authentication, which is what we just talked about. And let me go ahead and pin this down. So as for as created, uh, creating a login, uh, let me walk you through the, the steps in, uh, in the SQL Server Management Studio, which is SSMS. What you're going to do is you're going to expand the Security tab, and then you're going to expand the Logins tab, okay? And then uh, <clears throat> you are going to right-click. In fact, I think I have a couple of users in here, so let me go ahead and delete this one uh, let's see. okay so so as far as uh, you uh, right click on the logins and you select new login okay now this is where you will choose if it's a Windows login or Windows principal or a SQL Server principal so for now uh, let me just go ahead with a SQL Server authentication and I'm going to call it a DB um, let me just say DB user Okay, and you assign it a password. Um, obviously, you would want this to be a um, you know a combination of lower and uppercase uh, letters with some symbols. I'm going to uncheck these all for now, um, and then we will talk a little bit about those. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and click create it. So I select OK. Now you can see that here is the user in here, okay? So now as for his login, all that it does is gives access to 
this login, which is the DB user, to SQL Server, okay? Now, at the next point, you either have to give them some uh, permissions. We'll come back to server roles. User mapping basically is telling SQL Server, well, this particular login should have access to a particular database. So today we are going to be using Northwind, okay? So I can just uh, select that and then um, these other topics, we'll just leave those as is. So I will just hit OK for now, okay? Now at this point, all we have done is uh, we have created a login and we have given them permission to Northwind database. Now, how would you do this in SQL using T-SQL? So let me click on this and I'm going to go to the script over here that I have created earlier and I will walk you through this. So like I mentioned, as far as creating a login in SSMS, you go to the security tab, the logins tab, right mouse button, and then new login. For, for creating a login using T-SQL, which by the way stands for Transact SQL, you are going to use the, the basically command create login, okay? You do create login, the name of the login, you use the password command with their password, and you can assign a default databases and some of these other parameters. I am simply going to highlight this, okay? And uh, let me pin this down again. So in SQL, if you don't know, uh, you can simply highlight a certain section of the code and then either execute or F5. You'll notice when I, when I go there, you get the uh, F5 button. So now it said uh, it went ahead and created the login. Now if I come back to SSMS on this side and right click and select refresh, there should be a Mary in here. Notice there is no Mary. She was there before, but we deleted it. Now we're recreating it. When I select refresh, she should be right there, okay? So all we have done is created a login. Now, um, obviously, if you wanted to delete this login, you could use drop login Mary, which we, we are not going to do th this right now. Um, but uh, let's say, you know, you have some logins. How do you really find, um, you know, what are your server principles? This, these are basically the ser server level logins, okay? Well, you can use this, uh, this command here, which is using a, a, you know, system object, basically. So we go select star from sys, which is the schema, dot server principles, where the type is s or u. Well, what do they mean? s means a SQL login and U means a Windows login, okay? So I'm going to highlight this and execute this, okay? And let me move this up a little bit here so you can see it a little bit better. You'll notice that, um, you know, we have some default uh, uh, logins, you know, out of the box, but then we have one called a John, which if I highlight this part, you can see that uh, he's a SQL login. We have another one called Buckle, and then we had created this one just a few minutes ago uh, using the uh, you know using the graphic user interface, and then finally we we have Mary in here. Okay, so that that is a really good command to find out uh, you know who is really part of your um, uh, part of your group in here. Now remember what we have done so far. This is all at the uh, the server level. Okay. Uh, all the stuff that we've talked about, this is at the server level. Now we really need to move on to the uh, database level, okay? Now, uh, instead of call it, calling it a login, uh, in SQL Server, you call it a database user, okay? And again, um, as far as database, uh, if you're doing this, and uh, you know, within the interface, you're going to select the database, security tab, which is different than this tab, and then you go to user, right mouse button and then new user okay so let me go through this I'm going to expand databases go to Northwind go to security okay oh, not storage security users okay and I, if I refresh this <coughs> we, we already have the DB user that we created in step one but I could uh, right click and select 
I'm not going to go through this, but basically I could select Mary since all we have done is created a login and you, you're you going to map the user Mary to the login Mary, if I can find her right here, okay? And then you hit OK and then you hit OK here and then you hit OK here. So what that does is you're creating a database user named Mary that is mapped or tied to the login Mary. Okay, um, I'm going to actually cancel out of this and show you this using T-SQL. So the command is fairly simple. You basically go use Northwind, which is specifying what database are you using, and then you go create user Mary for login Mary. So a little bit of redundancy, but